Hey guys, this is Zoe again. Um, I'm here recording this for probably the third time. Um, this is a build that I have been, I'm calling Grenadine and Whiskey. It's supposed to be a southern gothic Victorian style house and it was based off of a house I found on um, I, I found a picture on Google image search and I just typed in Louisiana um, southern I think it was a Louisiana Victorian mansion and I wanted to build something a bit more grandiose I mean my first two builds were starter houses and um, they're not getting much, many views, but I'm not doing this for views. I'm just, I, I mean, I would appreciate them if you want to subscribe and watch what I do on my channel and all that stuff. I won't oppose, but, uh, I, I would, re I really love to know that people actually like what I do and think I'm not freaking terrible at it. Um, but yeah um right here i'm starting the roofing and this is the part that looks the most like the image i had found on google um i really love the roof i did on this build i think it's just i, I just think it's so interesting um and i put a lot of work into it um I uh, wanted to have these, um, what are those called, dormers, um, and to give it an interesting shape. Fun fact, my bedroom is actually also in an attic in my house, and um, I, it, my friend has dubbed it the sniper's nest, and um, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty accurate for me, me and my uh, sharpshooting. Um, no, that was dumb. Ignore what I just said. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, like, I really wanted to have a house that was very old-fashioned and very dark and, uh, I'm having trouble with the roofing here. It's pretty obvious, but uh, I wanted to do a house that was very dark and um, a little gloomy, and I don't think I achieved it that well, but I do think I achieved a really interestingly designed house. Um, I, If you guys are out there and you're thinking about doing your own YouTube builds and take this from someone who's starting out brand new um, they honestly make it look so easy because they just speed up the film as <laughs> this is at 10 times speed I'm having to split this into two parts actually because altogether the footage was 22 minutes long plus screenshots I think made it 24 um, so, yeah, um, I, I, like, it's just, as you can see, it's, it's, it seems like it's a really big build. It really does. It seems like there'd be a lot more rooms than there actually are. It ends up being only two bedrooms to, and two bathrooms and a nursery though you could easily put a few more bedrooms and another bathroom in if you really wanted to for the for my purposes I only have two sims living there right now um, I came up with this story and I put it in the um, about section of the create a sim I made for them um, basically Basically, um, Cornelius, who is the one who's dressed very traditionally in gothic style and with the Victor with the ascot and the vests and the just dark clothing, he is the one who owns this property. He inherited it from his family in my little 
in my head and that's how I think of it and um, but he inherited the house but there was no more wealth to go with it so it, he's actually kind of broke and he's trying to rebuild his family's fortune through through creating um, through writing books and he has this great aspiration to be the world's most famous and renowned romance author. The only problem is he himself has never been in love. He's only been in love with the idea of being in love. And then in comes our Mr. Paxton Rockwell. He was this sort of he's a grifter and he came in he rolled into town and they met at the blue velvet inn at least that's how i see it or blue velvet inn i meant blue velvet as in the lounge and um they met at the blue velvet lounge and they bonded over their mutual love of blues music cornelius though doesn't know that Paxton is secretly evil and he just sees his roguish looks and just fell in love with that smile but pa pa our dear Mr. Paxton I think will end up changing I think he'll see the error of his ways and he might not be evil anymore but he'll still be a roguish scamp because who doesn't love a roguish scamp um, I think I'll trade his trade his um, evil trait for kleptomaniac late, a little later on um, if you'd like to see me playing them and playing in this house just let me know because I'm not sure if anyone would even be interested in that. Here you can see I'm just putting in the wallpaper and stuff. Um, <laughs> the fun, like I go through all of this, and the funny thing is, um, I actually forgot to put in landscaping until like the very last minute. I had been about to upload it to the gallery, and I'd forgotten the landscaping, but. I did remember to put in a kitchen sink this time, unlike last time. Um, right now I'm working on what will become the uh, bar slash parlor room. And, and uh, I, now that I think about it, I probably should have put dartboard in there. They have an old fashioned style one, right? Um, because I just think that would be very appropriate. Um, I'm trying to make my own parquet floor design here. Um, does do I wonder if any of you remember the Sims 3 Colonial Manor? Because that was one of my all-time most favorite builds and throughout the entire Sims 3. I would just go into that mansion and I would <laughs> I would redecorate it I would get the one that is was all burned out and and had all the broken windows and I would go through like I was fixing it up I was kind of like if you know little Simsy I was kind of doing the little Simsy fixer upper before that was even like a thing um, and here I'm trying to put in like a marble tile floor and trying to put in a pat an interesting pattern um, and I decide to put in some chevrons because I really love a good chevron pattern I think it can look very classy it was something that was very popular in the 1920s and that is one of my favorite eras for um, building design. I really love Art Deco and I think it's very beautiful. Um, I end up just leaving this as the black and white tiles in the kitchen area. Um, 
And one of my favorite parts of this build is the landing looking down and it has the little area that I put some seating in a little bit later. Um, we're getting close to the end of this video and um, I don't think I get really much furniture furnishing done in this part. I think it gets mostly done in the next one, yeah. I do some in here, but, well, as you can see, um, that little space right there, I wanted it to be an office, and it does, it becomes an office, but I, as you can see, it's like a little bit of a tight squeeze. Um, I just had to have that grand landing. And I didn't really feel comfortable um, expanding the wall out any farther because I really wanted the wraparound porch on both levels. Um, because that's really a thing that's really iconic in a lot of the most famous uh, old-fashioned Victorian manners. Um, and as you can see here, I did a very uniquely shaped one because they had like two shapes back then. They had just higgledy piggledy crazy shapes with turrets and stuff like that or they had um, boxes and I think the boxes can look quite lovely and I might actually build one and it would be mainly a decorating thing um, but yeah it wouldn't be a huge a huge architectural thing and I was trying to imp this channel is about me trying to improve my architecture and builds all together um, though I could use some decorating too uh, I in fact forget to put in the side tables next to the bed um, I guess you can pick your own um, see you in the next video